Hi everyone, this is Sean. In today's video, I'm gonna answer a request from one of our subscribers. His name is Randy Nunez. Randy's question revolves around several issues regarding private security wearing different types of uniforms. He wanted to know what my opinion is on allowing private security to wear a camouflage style or combat style uniform. He also wanted to know my opinion regarding a private security officer wearing either a polo shirt or a class B style uniform. So let's, let's discuss this. Um, I will be discussing some California law. Those of you who are not in California, um, the majority, like 80% of this video is still gonna apply to you. Now, I'm not an attorney. Nothing that I discuss here is legal or professional advice. This is just my opinion. This is Sean's opinion only. Let's talk about why the armed services of the United States of America, why do they need camouflage pattern uniforms? Well, in my opinion, and I had never been in the military, and if I'm wrong, you guys who have honorably served, let, let us know. Let us know whether, whether or not what I'm saying is incorrect. But what I think is this, the reason why the military wears camouflage patterns is to blend into the environment. If you blend into the environment, you're less of a target to the enemy. For private security, you, you don't want to be disguised in the environment. You don't really want to blend in. You want to be visible to everybody so that everybody knows that you're private security and they could feel a lot safer because there might be no police presence and all you have is most of the time security. So if you blend in with the environment, your camouflage, there's always a possibility that your clientele might not feel as safe. Now let's talk about the combat style uniforms. Now, I don't know what any of these uniforms are called, but I do know that uh, military has evolved from the BDU, the battle dress uniform type, style of uniform into a more modernized type of uniform. I have no idea what it's called, you guys, but I will tell you, it, it looks like it's, it's a one piece uniform and you have, um, you have female Velcro um, cutouts right here and here and then over here so that you could you could attach the male Velcro attachments that would indicate your unit and then your and then your rank. I don't know what type of uniform that's called, but I'm sure you guys have seen it out there. Let's talk about whether or not this is this is something that we can use as private security. Now I will tell you this in private security there is so many private security officers that look like slobs. Now, I don't mean to put anybody down at all because this is a pro-security pro channel, but a lot of people don't even know, they don't even know what a gig line is. Um, they don't know how to, they don't know how to, how to dress appropriately. Um, it looks like they're out there parachuting because their, their, their shirt, their sh the bottom of the shirt are just puffed out so so sloppy um now in law enforcement yes there are sloppy looking police officers there there are but the majority of police officers have to go through some type of police academy and police academy a police academy is conducted in a in a semi or quasi uh, military style of boot camp and that's how the majority of law enforcement academies are ran and in in this style of, of, of training, um, I remember just as a, as a police explorer, guys, if I had a little string, this was in the late 90s, a little string that was on my shirt, I would have to, they would pull, the, the tech staff or the, the drill instructors would, would pull out the string from your uniform and make you hold it the whole day. And you have to give it a name. And at the end of the day, you have to show your drill instructors this piece of lint or this piece of string that, that, that you named. That's how strict that they were. With regards to your boots, they'd have to be that mirror shine. I mean, I, I would literally, even as an explorer, I would literally spend about an hour shining my, shining my shoes. That's how strict these law enforcement academies are. Now, things have changed. I'm sure, I went in early 2000, I'm sure, People who went through the 70s, 80s, 90s, um, law enforcement academies, the, I'm sure their, their academies were a lot more stricter than mine. 
Um, same thing with you, those of you who are in the military, those of you who have been in the military earlier than others, I'm sure the military ha has changed as well. In, in law enforcement, um, I know that there was an academy that was issuing stress cards. If you feel the drill instructors were stressing you out, you, you could pull out the stress card and show it to them and they have to leave you alone. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of silly things, but you guys, with that comes more lax uniform. Um, so when, you, when you're wearing this combat style, um, I think it was a long sleeve shirt uniform, it's more durable, it's easier to clean. Uh, majority of your private security officers, they're not going to the dry cleaners and, um, and getting their stuff dry cleaned. Now, they're also not um, probably pressing their own uniform, you guys. I could just imagine what they're doing is they're throwing their shirts, their pants, after two or three days of work without changing uniforms, because those of you who are private security company owners, a lot of you only give you give your officers maybe one or two uniforms for an entire five-day work week, but that's a topic of another subject. But I could just imagine that a lot of private security officers are just throwing their stuff in the wash machine, in the dryer, sometimes ironing it, sometimes not, and then that's it, and then you wear it. Um, with these combat-style uniforms, they are so durable. You can even put them in the wash in a dryer and they'll still look like they're some, somewhat pressed. Now, I don't know if that's with all uniforms, but that's the impressions that, that I get. Um, does it look too much military? I, I don't think so, guys. Um, I, I actually think that it might be a good idea just to keep your guys, your guys looking clean. Um, the alternative is to wear, now I'm gonna have a difficult time explaining because I don't have any any, any pictures to show you right now, but you have your your class A uniforms. And class A means different style uniforms to everyone else. So your class A is your long sleeve shirt, um, collar shirt with a, a tie, a tie bar, and all of your, your pins and medals and all the other good stuff. By the way, I don't have, I don't have pins and medals. Um, I have nothing, nothing on my, on my law enforcement uniform. But those of you who have stuff on your uniform, it's, I'm sure it's all decorated out. Um, that, that's your class A. In, in private security, that would also be your class A, depending on the organization, obviously. Uh, law enforcement, class A, long sleeve shirt. Now, there's, there's a class B, and I don't know what class B is for the military, because I've never been in the military, but for law enforcement, your class B is your collared shirt, no tie, you have a black shirt underneath or a white shirt, and you have a short sleeve shirt. This is this is more for, for duty purposes. You're out there patrolling the streets. Even as a private security, normally your class B is, is, is just that. Again, depending on, on, on where you work. Now you can wear your, I don't know what they call them now, their cargo pants, your BDUs, your TDUs, whatever it is. Um, some security guard companies will allow you to wear that. And same thing with law enforcement. At the agency where I work at, um, we're allowed to wear those as well now the, the problem is that if you get these raggedy tag bdu uniforms from your military surplus store you guys um they're not going to keep the creases you're going to have to iron them it, you're better off getting um some type of bdus or tdus where there's side pockets and and not, nothing all the way in the front ones that are made more t more to iron ones that are made more um durable and again i'm not i'm not a uniform specialist as mentioned um, I'm, I'm more of a, of a, well, as mentioned right now, more as a, as a generalist. Now, what, what do I prefer? A polo shirt or a class B uniform? That, that's going to depend on your post. If, if you want your guys to have clean, unif clean uniforms most of the time, but with less pressed appearance, I think polos is the way, is the way to go. Cause you can just throw in the washer machine, um, I mean, you're supposed to iron all your uniforms, but you can get away with just throwing in the, in the dryer. Um, the problem is you have, the, again, the security officers that they, they, they use their, um, it just seems like they use their uniform as a, as a napkin. And, you know, all those stains, they're not, gonna be, they're not gonna be cleaned out with your ordinary wash machine. And the, again, these polo shirts, they just tend, they just tend to wrinkle a lot more. Um, sometimes they're a lot durable, sometimes not. As for the the class B, it's 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 a lot less comfortable, but it tends to look a lot more professional. 
Again, depending on the whole setup of your uniform. Now, camouflage. Um, let's talk about the state of California. In state of California, you can wear camouflage uniforms. There's no restrictions against that right now. But if we go out there acting like commandos, then the BSI, the Bureau of Security Investigative Services, the regulatory arm for private security officers in California, they're going to change that. Because in the last two years, there's a senator, I think in the Pico Rivera, Whittier area, his name is, I think his first name is Bob. He's a Vietnam vet. I don't know why he passed this law, or the, I'm sorry, why he authored this bill, because he's also, he, also, he also used to be a reserve officer, reserve police officer. But he authored this bill where police officers, deputy sheriffs, anyone in law enforcement, you cannot wear camouflage on patrol, regular patrol. Only if you are attached to a SWAT detail, special weapons and tactics, or SRT detail, special response team. Um, if you're conducting some type of service, like in those special units, then you're allowed to wear ca camouflage, but not, not regular patrol. Guys, gals, I don't know of any law enforcement agencies out there that are patrolling in camouflage. You might see maybe a green shirt and tan pants, or I'm sorry, tan shirt, green pants, um, all greened out or something, but I, I, I'm not seeing them patrol regularly. I'm, I mean, responding to calls with service we're in camouflage, so why would you pass that bill? I know what it is, it, it's basically to control the police. But anyhow, um, that bill was passed, it was authored, and then it was signed by Governor, ne Governor Newsom. Okay, a, a lot of people don't even know about that, about that um, bill and then that law being signed. Um, I could see the same thing being done to private security if, if we go out there and start acting like commandos. Okay. Um, so I, I do know that my discussion on Class B versus Polo, uh, maybe I give you some insight, maybe not, you guys. It's just, it just too difficult right now to decide which one's better. It, it just depends. There's so many variables. Um, now, look at wh when is it okay to start looking tactical, uh, you know, wear, wear camouflage, um, that cam cam I lost my from a thought, um, combat style uniforms. Now, this is where I'm, gonna, I'm going to separate my ideas from a lot of you. A lot of you, I understand, are, are gonna disagree with me and I, I still respect your decisions. But look, if, you're, if you have a private security company and there's a, and there's a sp specific special threat, so if you're patrolling a mall and the specific threat is there's gonna be a, a bomb threat or an act, uh, active killer event, um, or just an event that gets people on edge, I highly recommend that if your guys have and gals have the proper training, um, that I don't think that putting them in a combat style security uniform or even, even in, in, in camouflage, I don't think it's a bad idea. I really don't. For example, I went to Las Vegas a couple weeks ago, and I'll probably do a video on that, and on the casino floor, you have your private security officers. It looks like normally they'll wear yellowish, but it just depends on what casino you're at. But I've seen two of them um, with combat uniforms, combat style uniforms. And on the back, it said SRT and law enforcement. That means special response team. Um, and I thought, I actually, th I thought that maybe they might be security because I didn't see anything with security. Now they had a patch and. I didn't see exactly what the Pat said. Um, so I thought that they are either on SWAT, an HR team, hostage response team, or um, SRT special, yeah, special response team for the Las Vegas Metro, because I'd never seen Las Vegas Metro uniform. So I, I thought that's who they are. And it's not because of their uniform. It's because there is just something about them that I can't describe. They just feel like they match the uniform. Their equipment was where it, it should be and for me, I, I gravitated towards their uniform because I've been in law enforcement for so long and, and also security. So I just found them to appear very interesting to me. But it wasn't just their uniform that I felt confident that they were there. It's it just their posture, their command of presence, the way they have their equipment. There's just, there's something different about them. So I looked them up and um, that casino, so I was staying at Flamingo and there's a couple of other casinos along the strip um, that are kind of attached to the Flamingo. So I don't know which one this was. I think there was this, this maybe it's Caesar's Palace or one of the Caesar Palace owned casinos. I looked them up and that is a security response team. 
That's what the SRT stands for. They were in, not camouflage, but it looked like a coyote tan uniform with their medical kit. Um, I looked them up, and sure enough, you guys, you need uh, military, you need MP experience, or some type of special operations experience that has something to do with, with terrorist, terrorism, um, or you need a law enforcement background. So you need either of the two. That's it. And actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a video on this because there's I actually found a small pathway how you might be able to get in if if your experience does not include military or law enforcement. I'm gonna discuss this one percent chance of of getting in. But that's another video if you're interested. Then watch that video. Um, but no, they have re these requirements, and all they deal with is basically. Um, violent situations or potential violent situations at the casino and they these guys are, are are highly trained and guess who's in charge of their unit their division commanders there's four or five um, Las Vegas Metro SWAT members uh, former SWAT members and about one or two of them were designated marksmen other other words they were snipers so you have a full-time, you have guys that have full-time SWAT experience that are the commanders of the HRT team. I'm sorry, the SRT team. And in addition to that, you have um, an, air an, an air marshal on top of that who has probably extensive terrorism type training. So these aren't your ordinary people, but I, I was able to read these guys and I just know that they have some, some special training. What I'm saying is this, don't get your guy, and I, I don't mean to put anybody down here, but your, your guy that takes the guard card course and then completes the 40 hours online, don't put them in, a uniform, in these uniforms out there, you guys, because somebody that's actually, that is former military, um, former law enforcement can, can read them out and they can, smell, they can smell BS. Like something is wrong with their uniform and that that command of presence is it's not going to be there it's not going to be there and i don't even know how you would explain it some of you who are watching this you know exactly what i'm, I'm talking about just some something about them gives off the aura that they have they have either combat experience street experience um or they belong in in the military or law enforcement they're just they're just something about them you don't put people with 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 online with this 40 hour online training um guard car course and that's what they're restricted to um you don't put them in this uniforms guys it just it's not gonna somebody's gonna read them and they're gonna know that they're not gonna they're not prepared for for, for another attack i don't know how to explain it but i think that was that's going to happen i don't mean to put any of you guys down who have all your 40 hours of guard car training online um, sometimes online is better but if when you, when you look at the the guard industry as a whole, um, the training, it, it's substandard and it's, it's, what, it's what you make of it. And I know that a lot of you guys who are watching my videos, I think you guys are the 1% who actually go out there and get a little bit more training than your typical private security officer. So let me know what you guys' thoughts are. You, th you guys think it's okay to wear combat style uniforms? Do you think it's okay to wear camouflage? Does it depend? Does it depend on the assignment? How about uh, let's help let's help out uh, mr. Nunez he want to know what my thoughts are on a polo shirt versus a class B uniform and I, I'm sorry I'm not able to give that much input um, but maybe he'll be reading in the comment section below you guys all take care and if you have any requests for other videos please let me know I'm working on a couple be safe